I think that the ranch and working with nature is just a beautiful place to raise children. Nature is really the best teacher. You want to plan for the next generation and the generation after that. Not all of them might decide to stay on the farm. No matter what they do, the hope would be that long term they carry that with them and maintain that love of nature and just respect the land. We know that things are always going to change over time. I think of the changes that we've made in the last 20 years. In the next 20 years, there's going to be a lot more changes. The climate and terrain is so variable in British Columbia. In our area, we're living in a wetter climate. The terrain is really rugged and it's primarily timbered. We recognize that and we try to adapt to it. We try to remain diverse so that when challenges come our way, then we have other things that we can fall back onto. It's amazing how resilient natural systems are. Historically, this area was still dominated by fire, so the fire controlled the vegetation to a large extent. This silo pasture here is intended to mimic those naturally occurring openings. The silo pasture is the intentional management of timber and forage together on the same landscape. It's not impeding the growth of the trees, so we still have grass, we still have trees that are meeting all the forestry standards. It's sort of a win-win for both ranching and forestry. After this area was harvested, it was destumped because of root disease. And then we planted forage and then also planted trees. And so the domestic grasses function to do several things. One, they immediately stabilize the soil surface and reduce soil erosion. And it really stimulates the productivity of this ecosystem while the trees are starting to establish themselves and eventually they become more, more dominant. The trees are planted adjacent to a large immovable object so that the livestock are less likely to stand on. This particular civil pasture was created two years ago. Our intention on this area is to create two crops simultaneously. One is the forage for our livestock and eventually the timber. But in the meantime, this forage really helps support wildlife as well. Particularly in the spring, these areas are frequented by uh, grizzly bear and black bears and ungulates. And it's a, one of the first sources of high quality forage in the springtime. The things that we look at for sustainability is that there's got to be an economic foundation. It's got to work for our family, not just our family, but the community. Water quality doesn't end on our property boundary. It's what we provide the next person downstream from us. The river project is a multi-year project. The first year was Sarpal Fencing, which is the Species at Risk Partnership in Agricultural Lands protecting almost 2.2 kilometers along Eagle River. It took us that first year to get some of the other partnerships in place. Phase two, year two, included some additional uh, livestock control fencing, riverbank restoration works, which included stabilizing the riverbanks in two different sections. This year, the third year, again, a little bit of fencing as well as the installation of off-stream water. We actually ended up partnering with Splats and First Nations. We also partnered with the Environmental Farm Plan Program and the Shoe Shop Watershed Council. FRIS, which is the Farmland Riparian Interface Stewardship Program. We were also lucky enough we partnered with Department of Fisheries and Oceans as well. So we feed here all winter long. Primarily we feed using the round mail feeders, which are moved on a daily basis. And after we're done with the field like now, we're left with a nice even cover of manure and a little bit of leftover feed that gets incorporated back into the soil. We like to limit traditional tilling methods as much as we can just to reduce the soil erosion and the loss of organic matter and microbes that comes along with that. We have had quite a bit of challenges with growing corn here in the past due to the high grizzly bear population in this area. They were going after the corn pretty aggressively, eating it and trampling down very large areas as they go. And in some years we were having upwards of 25% damage to our crop. The grizzly bears, surprisingly enough, don't really bother our cows so much. It's a matter of finding a balance. So we put up this five foot, seven strand electric fence here. And actually when the corn matures, we put an additional two strand fence in front of it to create more of like a three dimensional object. And it did help reduce the damage significantly. We went from about 25% to around seven. Although there were a couple bears that still figured out how to dig underneath. 
you have to be able to adapt and change to ensure that everything is looked after and just changing with industry, changing with the times. One reason we introduced drones here is it is something that's on the forefront and it will help our operation stay in an environmentally friendly manner. The no-till, it's the same thing, it's better for the environment and it's actually better for our operation long term. It's really special to us to receive the Sustainability Award because we know that we're part of an industry that they live and breathe taking care of the land and thinking about the next generation. That's what everybody does. They look after the environment and uh, to be recognized as, as someone that's, that's doing that, uh, it's really special.